everybody, Keep7 here, back with another Magic the Gathering Arena video, and today <clears throat> I'm just going to be doing kind of a deck tech, or a deck breakdown, just kind of a show off of a deck that has been sweeping the uh, Kaldheim qualifiers, um, Bant Coco, it's been like ripping through with like 80% win rates, just catching people by surprise, um, and it's a super linear deck, um, not like, it's like, it, it has control elements, it's like pseudo control prison aggro it's like it's it's incredible and it's so it's so unique um that i just had to i had to play it uh and and show you guys um so the the deck centers around playing collected company and getting out a bunch of really controlling and valuable like creatures um so you're playing a very wide board, which is something that I think that like a lot of people aren't thinking about in, in Historic right now. Uh, you know, a lot of people are playing, you know, like, well, obviously Nissa will, will help you to play wider, but, you know, it's just usually like one Nissa land and an Uro, and people are just trying to control boards, so removing lands, and, um, you know, cat ovens can sometimes get kind of wide, but usually it's just like a Mayhem Devil. There's a lot of removal. But this kind of plays around removal in that it just, it, it's all creatures. There's like barely... You have creatures that also act as removal, uh, and then you have other creatures that act as, like, kind of controllers, like, controlling aspects. Um, but basically, you're just using Coco to try to just build a huge wide board uh, and just control the board as well as just, like, hammer your opponent with some strong uh, strong creatures and strong attacks. So let's get into the actual uh, the, the makeup of the deck and the card. So we have Selfless Savior, which is just a great one-drop. It'll help you protect, you know, specific creatures that you want to be, you know, keep alive. Uh, Luminarch Aspirant is definitely your aggro engine. This, uh, so, you know, two mana, one, one. At the beginning of each combat, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So this is just going to be beefing up your creature so that you can swing turn after turn. Uh, obviously, yeah, again, aggro, it's your aggro engine. This is what's going to be dri your driving force forward to be attacking, you know, your opponent's face and getting that life total from 20 to zero. Thalia. Uh, two mana, two one with first strike. Non creature spells cost one more to cast. Um, so it's just a great tr creature to put out there on turn uh, two. Um, first strike is huge. Something that you're going to be growing, obviously, with the Luminarch Aspirant. Um, and the tax on non creature spells hurts your opponents way more than it hurts you. It increases the cost of your collected company. Um, it increases the cost of your collected company to five, but that will hurt you a lot less than you think. You'll probably get to five lands, um, and you'll you'll probably be fine. So, um, taxing you know your opponent is going to hurt them more than it hurts you, and especially because there's so much removal out there and stuff. Just making your opponent have to pay one more for each uh, removal is just good. Scavenging ooze is just a you know a post board wipe threat or um, just a threat that can just eat grave you know anything like an uro. Croxa, anything that's going to be in a graveyard that you need out of a graveyard, this is a great way to do it. Meddling Mage is one of the, it's the two mana, two, two. It's, this is like one of those controlling cards I was talking about. This kind of, as it enters the battlefield, choose a non-land card name. Spells with the chosen name can't be cast. So I just played the, against Control. I uh, got her out on turn two in both games, and I named Wrath of God. And then the rest of the game, they were figuring out how to remove her so that they could cast a Wrath of God and get rid of my board. Um, but of course, I was making their life hell with taxes and keeping uh, Meddling Mage alive, either from Hexproof or keeping her alive because uh, because of Indestructible. Um, so it, it's, it's, you, you play this weird game of like, you know, they try to find ways and answers to, to take care of your board. And you, the, this, this deck is just built with answers it, itself. Um, so to keep going, Archon of Emeria, just to reduce uh, each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. You're probably not doing this anyway. So this, again, hurts your opponent more than it hurts you. Um, Non-basic lands entering tapped is kind of a neither here nor there. I mean, sometimes it, sometimes it's good, sometimes it doesn't really mean anything. Skyclave Apparition is one of your two pieces of removal. So there's there's eight total, and both of them are basically creatures that also act as removal. Skyclave Apparition, I think everybody knows. I'll probably be making a video about this uh, in my card discussion soon because this is probably one of the best cards to be printed in white in a long time. Um, Elspeth Conquers Death is up there, but <clears throat> and I guess Yorian, but Yorian is both blue and white. So you, I guess you could call that like gold because it's a, technically either color, but it's not a gold card. Um, but anyway, it's it's one of the best white cards to be printed in a long time. Um, 
So any non-land permanent converted mana cost, converted mana cost four, I don't know what accent that was, converted mana cost four or less, uh, you can, you know, just get rid of it. It goes underneath this card, and then as soon as Skyclave Apparition leaves, they get a token with the XX, where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled spell. So, you know, Questing Beast uh, would come back as a 4-4, but it wouldn't have that mess of text uh, beneath it. So, you know, it's it's ways to get rid of, you know, enchantment, anything that's making your life difficult. And the, the best part about it is it's uh, non-land permanence. It is also non-token permanence, and I've run into situations where you're playing a bunch of tokens, but, you know... At the end of the day, most tokens are like 1-1s, one and she's a 2-2. Two two, so the bottom line, you can get a 3-mana 2-2, two two, which sucks, but it's a blocker. And then we have a couple copies of Glass Pool Mimic, which is a great card. Um, if you hit this off a collected company, you can play it like I had... So I just played against Control, and they were trying to find a way to get rid of my Meddling Mage, which was preventing them from playing Wrath of God. So they tapped out trying to get rid of her, I think with a cast out or something like that. So when they tapped out, I cast Collected Company on my turn, which sucks, but I also hit a uh, Glass Pool Mimic off that Collected Company, so I was able to make a copy of, uh, or they were trying to get rid of my Linvala, or maybe my Meddling Mage, I forget, what, which, whichever, but basically I was able to make a Glass Pool Mimic of what they were trying to get rid of. Uh, I think it was Linvala. I made a Glass Pool Mimic copy of Linvala, which kept her on the battlefield, and then on the next turn when they tried to clear my board or, or whatever they were trying to do. I think they, or they, tar they were trying to target Meddling Mage on the following turn, and I was able to sacrifice Linvala to give Meddling Mage Hexproof. You see, what, you see, like, the chain reaction of things that goes on. I mean, the thing about this deck is you just need to know your opponent's deck, like, to a T. So it probably would benefit you to have played Rakdos Sacrifice, Sultai, and Four Color Midrange... Um, to be playing, like, the other, like, Jund, the Jund Coco deck, um, and then what else is popular and historic right now? Uh, I guess the, what's the, it's not Gruel Aggro, is it? What's the aggro deck that's popular and historic? Goblins? Um, yeah, like, so, like, all the popular decks to be playing in historic, uh, this... Like, you, if you know how to play each of those decks, you know, like, what to target with, you know, you know how to play, essentially this deck is just playing around things, you know, you denying them, ex, you know, accessibility to their really good cards, and then, uh, and then playing around the removal and stuff, um, and just kind of thinking about what their next move is going to be and what's in their, I mean, that's, that's magic in a nutshell, but, um, it really, folk, this deck really is beneficial to a pilot who has played those other decks and knows how they work and knows what to target and when to target it, if, if you get what I mean. Um, but anyway, Glass Pool Mimic is just a, it's a, it's a kind of a spicy include, but I really like it. Deputy of Detention is your four other removal spells. Um, you know, again, I was playing against uh, Control. They had, what was that card? Um, like, Timely Retreat or Timely Reinforcements or whatever. So I got rid of all their tokens with this one guy. So... It's just good removal, you know, if they have a, if they have anything that they're playing and they have copies of it, you know, cat, oven, or like whatever, it's just a good way to get things off the battlefield um, and keep it off the battlefield. Uh, and then Linvala, Shield of Seagate, three mana, three, three with flying. I mean, that's, that's not, that's okay. Um, but really what, what is, um, what is kind of important about her is she has an ability, sacrifice her, and choose Hexproof or Indestructible Creatures you control, gain that ability until end of turn. So she's just more board wipe protection, more more removal protection. Um, at the beginning of combat, if you have a full party, choose non-land permanent and opponent controls until next turn if you can't attack block. Yeah, so it's, it's more control too. Uh, I didn't even know that first part. So I guess at the beginning of combat, if you have a full party, which you have a wizard, you have... Lots of wizards, rogues, spirit, soldier, cleric. Do you need a... What's what's in a party? Is it a knight? Cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard. So I guess this really isn't going to come into play. Rogue. Cleric. We There are no warriors in here, are there? So I guess, yeah, that's never really going to come into play. Because you're never going to be able to have a, a full party. Because you're never you you never will have a warrior. But either way, and then collected company is is obviously the the top end. This is the the most expensive spell in the deck and the one that will win you games. Um, 
four mana, five if you have Athalia on the field. Um, look at the top six cards of your library. Put two creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So uh, just really good way to get, you know, a lot of creatures out there. You build a wide board uh, with all of these guys and you just, you play around stuff and you, you get the job done. Um, in the sideboard... I've seen a lot of different things in sideboards for this deck. Uh, I have two Baffling End, two Rest in Peace. So Baffling End would be against like a, another, you know, an aggro mirror. I mean, maybe not a mirror, but against an aggro matchup. Um, just get rid of two early creatures with Baffling End. Not so bad. Rest in Peace would be for your graveyard interactions. So your decks, decks that, you know, obviously interact with their graveyards a lot. You can just ensure that anything that's going into their graveyard gets exiled so they can't have access to it. Tithe Taker, also probably pretty good against Control. You know, just the more taxes you put on Control, the harder their life becomes. Disdainful Stroke, you know. You can throw a few of these in here if they have, like, if they if there's a four mana spell, you really don't want them, a, four, a converted mana cost for a higher spell, you really don't want them to cast. I guess this card is good. I really think you could probably cut this for something better. Um, I just don't know what. Maybe, like, I mean, I guess, like, Tomic wouldn't be so bad. I don't know. There, there are other things that you could probably put in here, aside from Disdainful Stroke. I, just, I don't think it's the worst include, but it's also not the best. Um, especially as a two of. Like, the odds that you even draw this anyway and, and are going to be able to prevent, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to play. I don't know. And then we have... Oops, sorry about that. Uh, two, Knight of Autumn. Um, you know, if they have any enchantments or artifacts that are problems for you, this is a good way to get rid of them. Uh, two Linvala, Keeper of Silence. Um, so, you know, uh, decks decks that are going to be using a lot of activated abilities from their creatures. So think, um, I guess it would be like uh, Goblins this would be good against. Or is that triggered? Is that a trigger ability? But yeah, like probably Goblins and also um, the Sack decks. Uh, and then Yasharn is obviously good against Sacrifice. So you've got a lot here. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the deck in a nutshell. Uh, I did some tweaking. I'm, I probably am going to edit it out, but I did some tweaking to the mana base. Um, my problem was I just wasn't hitting blue land drops as early as I wanted to. So we got up to 10 blue land drops. We put in one irrigated farmland, which is not so great, but <clears throat> you really don't want tap lands in this deck, but I just don't have another untapped blue. Uh, there are the fast lands, which I think are probably really good includes the ones that like come in untapped. If you control less than a certain amount or... There's ones that come in untapped unless you control a, you know, a mountain or a plains or something like that. So there's definitely improvements to the mana base. I just don't have the resources to make all those rare lands. So this is what I have. You can definitely do better. Uh, this is what I have. Again, we went over the sideboard. You can definitely, there are definitely improvements here. The first one I would say is cut Disdainful Stroke and replace it with something better. Uh, but that's the deck. It's, <clears throat> again, it's a weird mix of like control um, and like aggro and... Um, yeah, and it's just a very cool, weird deck that I am really, really, I really like it. It's, it is kind of linear, so it is kind of just like a, you know, you, you, you mull until you find a playable hand, and then you play it, and then you just rely on good top decking and stuff like that, so it's not really, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I would say the, 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 the skill is really in deciding if a, if a hand is playable, if an opening hand is playable, and then obviously in sideboarding. Because uh, the actual gameplay of the deck is pretty linear. It's, um, <clears throat> you know, you want to pace your threats and stuff like that against certain opponents, um, but for the most part, it's just get get some threats down and cast Collected Company, and hopefully your opponent doesn't have what they need to... Uh, either you prevent your opponent from playing what they need to, or or you just take you just run away with the game. Uh, but yeah, so that's the deck. Uh, I'll, we'll... we'll We'll play some games here in ranked, and we'll we'll kind of show you what it's all about. Um, but yeah, that's it. It's very fun. I highly recommend. It. If you if you don't have the wild cards for it, I wouldn't play it. Uh, but if you do, or if you already have these cards, just assemble it, throw it together. It's it's fun. It's definitely worth worth a shot, worth a try. So yeah, let's get into some matches. Well, we just beat Sacrifice, and I wasn't recording. Um. So yeah. Sad face. Um, oh my god.
All right. So yeah, we just beat Sacrifice, and I wasn't recording any of it, so that feels bad. Uh, with no white mana, I don't think this is playable. We'll keep this. Um, what do we put back? It might be a little early for a Linvala. We can play Glass Pool, Mimic, Tapped, and then Temple Garden. Okay. Oh. Sultai? Mono Black, maybe. If we get a Thalia down, I'm gonna hold the Meddling Mages until we know what we're playing. Um, I'm just gonna prevent them. I mean, I don't, I don't know what we're playing against, but I want them to stop hitting my hand. Soren, vampires. Okay. So that's something we can block. Vampires. I, I don't really know what we're up against. I've never played against vampires before, especially in Historic. So, well, I think Historic is the, probably the only place they're playable, but yeah. I, yeah, I have no idea what this kid's playing, so. Maybe Soren was the better pick, so he can't cast another one? I just, like, what could those last two cards be? This is where, like, knowing decks to play is probably... I'll take five. Knight of the Evan Legion. He can grow that, so we'll get rid of that. Should probably pay attention to which one I'm casting. I guess I'd rather let the... Yeah, I'd rather her not be the one to have to block, but... But I should definitely keep note of what he's playing so I know what to, uh... We'll let it through. Soren. Do I think a Soren is what he has in his hand? No. But at the very least, holding up a blocker. He's got to hold up blocks for the rest of the game, too, now. So. So I just need to do three damage. He's got three. He can block three. 
So, uh, we'll hold. Um, he could do something that gains him life, which could kill us. We're only at four. But, all right, we got him. All right, so that's that's an example of me playing. I, I mean, I'm really lucky that I had all those meddling mages. Um, but that's me not knowing what uh, what's going on, really. I have no idea particularly what he's playing. I don't play against vampires often, and I'm new kind of to historic, so. Ah, man. Um. I th I think I don't think we change anything. I think we leave it as is. I think we leave the main deck untouched. Um, Thoughtseize is really tough. Thoughtseize picked us apart. It's kind of interesting that this deck has performed so well, especially against like Saltai, where things like Thoughtseize are big. Because it feels like Thoughtseize just they pick your hand apart and then you're just relying on top decks, which I guess your top decks are always going to be pretty good, but. Ah, uh, it's keepable. Pick your poison. Thalia. Probably a decent pick. One of those Luminarchs is coming down. Every time, dude. I feel like if, if somebody has one Thoughtseize, they always have another. <laughs> it's just preposterous. Wow. Okay. So picking up an easy win. Um, probably not great for content, but <laughs> I mean, that's three wins. That's a win against blue white control. That's a win against sacrifice. I wasn't recording those two after the win against control. I was like, I have to record this. Uh, and then I wasn't recording against sacrifice and then a win against vampires. I didn't even know what I was playing and we still won. So, but, um, Hopefully this game will be a little bit better content-wise than the Vampires game. Our next opponent is Bald Rob. <laughs> Bald Rob? Bald Rob. I don't know if he was trying to come up with like some cool adventure fantasy name like Bald Rob. Or if he's just legitimately just a, a bald guy named Rob. This is playable. Um, I would like to see some earlier curve, but... Okay, so we're playing Flash. He could lock us out of the game from here on out. Maybe not. So what what are the what are the counter spells that these decks usually play? Do I want to get a meddling mage down? Well, I can't now. Let's get Thalia. So this is really just a race. And he's definitely coming out ahead. Uh, 
bell pierce. Maybe maybe we should go for the auras. Ooh, sea dash or octopus? How quaint. Could have attacked there, and the sea dash or octopus would have taken a block. Or like, but I, I don't think they block either way. So maybe that's free two damage. So we get a 3-3. Three, three. He can sacrifice the sailor to get a free card draw, so maybe I should have blocked the octopus. But I think we I think our options are fine here. would like to see him tap out. Alright. So I don't think we can collect a company. We gotta keep ourselves alive too. Okay, so he's gonna prevent that from happening. That gets one counter out of his hand. He's gonna just draw more. If he blocks with Siren Storm Tamer, okay, he doesn't. He knows about First Strike. Uh, Shisa. I need him to tap out so I can cast Collected Company. Take one. Linvala really fucking. So I guess, is that a triggered ability or an activated ability? I think that's a triggered ability. Activated ability would be like clicking on Linvala, right? He's got to have like a brazen bar or something, right? Shit, maybe that wasn't my chance. I these these matchup the the aggro like the aggro tempo games are that's this is my, always my weakness. I never get these right. Let's go for it. He's tapped out. Um, 
just I don't know too much of what these decks play, so I'll just pick what I know to stop him from playing that. Because I imagine his his hand is just filled with counter spells, right? That's all his hand is probably. Ooh, okay, that sucks. Terramander. That's what I should have meddling maged. Terramander. Alright, so we got a game one against these these guys. This I hate this type of deck. Tithe Taker is gonna be huge. Baffling End could be helpful. Knight of Autumn could be helpful too. Keeper of Silence could be good too. Uh, the activated ability of that like siren storm color, but do I really want to have a four ans four mana answer to a one mana answer? I don't think so. Knight of Autumn could be good to like destroy his like curious obsessions, but um, not entirely sure. Scooze could be good. Archon of Amiri is actually good because it's fly it's a two three flyer, and he didn't really get his flyers big. I don't know. I don't think Knight of Autumn is actually that good. Tithe Taker is definitely good. Thalia is good. Fuck, what do we cut here? De Deputy of Detention is going to be really good. We can cut one Glass Pool Mimic. We can cut one Archon of Emeria. I guess we can cut one Scooze. And I guess one Selfless Savior. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> but Terramander, is that, I gotta keep that in my head. They're playing Terramander, and he, he could be a huge problem later in the game. All right, this is playable. We need blue mana, but we don't have anything we need blue mana for. So this is definitely something we can play. Played around sensor. I want Luminarch to resolve. Archon of Emeria could also be good. Oh, Graph Digger's Cage, okay. So how much could he possibly have, right? That's the idea. What are the odds that those last two cards are counter spells? It's 
so that second storm tamer hurts. You do meddling mage. Huh, or do we do this? Oh, right. Graft digger's cage. Okay, so this is going to be tough, especially with a graph if he has graft diggers cages. Do we just take collected company out? Then it's like how we win, but at the same time, like maybe maybe we don't do that. Maybe we just try to straight up beat him with our creatures. We just go cheaper. I don't know. <laughs> this could be really dumb. This could be really dumb. I'm gonna... Somebody... Somebody help me. Oh, man. It's a really great hand. We need land, though. I have to have land. Okay. It's better. Uh, I think we get the Tithe Taker down. We don't attack if he has the Spectral Sailor. I think Curious Obsession is a fair call. Maybe a counter spell would have been a better idea. But like, there's so many counter spells that I would have to account for. Essence capture, that's a good one. It won't increase its power, will it? It will. <clears throat> hmm. Because the plus one, plus one counter? Interesting. Uh, bu -bu -bu. I guess we can we can double spell here. We can play Thalia. See if he wants to counter it. If he doesn't, then we glass pool and mimic. I guess.
What do we glass pool mimic? Meddling mage? I guess we'd, yeah, meddling mage, I guess. Um, what is she? Essence capture? Curious obsession. So we have eight damage on the board. Stern Dismissal would be brutal. Maybe Stern Dismissal is what I wanted to prevent. <clears throat> I just don't play this. I'm playing a lot of decks I just don't play often. Let's see. We have the block. So unless he... Oh, Stern Dismissal is probably what I should have done. Because the Stern Dismissal wins him the game. But we can block the... We can block the Octopus. With the one mana Flyer. If he swings. Have to block here. He gets one draw. We beat him. Oh man, I played that so wrong too. I just, I don't play these decks, like, I don't play these tempo decks enough to really know what they're playing. And that, and that's, and, you know, that's more to my point. Um, like, you have to pilot the decks that you play against when you play this deck. So you know, you know, like, at what point in the game, you know, you know what, what to shut down, when to shut it down. Um, so, and that was, def that was like, that was proof of that. The Vampire's Day game and this game have been... Absolutely proof of that. I don't know anything about those decks because I never played them and never have played them. I've never played against them before. Well, I've played against the te the blue tempo deck, and I usually lose because I hate. I just I never get it. Um, but you know, I've I've never played vampires before. I've played blue tempo. I know enough about it. Like I know the idea of it, but I don't know the specific cards that are being played. Uh, and meddling mage is just such a good card. Meddling mage just brought it home there. Um. So, final thoughts. Uh, we played one more game. Um, we got demolished. It was uh, mono black, like, mid-range with Phyrexian Obliterator and uh, a few other cards. And, um, they're like, uh, I just, uh, I didn't have the answers. And it's another deck that I just, I don't, I don't know. I've never played it. I don't know how to play against it. I know how to play mono black aggro. Uh, 
with you know like the the small recursion dudes like um gutter bones and dread nightmare or whatever his name is dread wanderer um and like demonic embrace and spawn of mayhem like i know that black aggro deck he was playing like a, a very mid-range deck with like phyrexian obliterator and gray merchant of asphodel and in both games we didn't have meddling mage to shut down obliterator or gray merchant um and he thought seized collective company out of our hand and and, and essentially he thought seized an agonizing remorse which why would you ever play agonizing remorse and thought seized? Uh, just play Thoughtseize, but maybe he's he, he was clearly running a lot of discard, which this deck just folds to because you know if 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 you if if this deck relies on winning off of its opening hand and curving out and hitting all of its drops, then obviously it's it's a tough matchup. So things like Thoughtseize, Agonizing Remorse are all obviously very very detrimental. You know they'll pick apart your opening hand, which is what you really got to try to win with. Um, Top decking is okay. I mean, top decking is is also how you win. Um, this deck just res, you know resorts to it very quickly. Um, but you know when when your hand gets picked apart like that and can get picked apart turn after turn after turn, it can be very difficult to recover, uh, especially if they're just making you discard all of your win conditions. Uh, but overall, I mean, other other than that kind of matchup, like a thought a very thoughts easy discardy. And uh, and mid range mid range is tough for this deck because they, they just go bigger uh, and this deck doesn't go very big it goes very wide and kind of controlling but again we didn't get our controlling pieces out there uh, early enough we didn't get our meddling mages we got skyclave apparitions uh, which would be good against obliterator but he was he was putting he was putting other threats down ahead of obliterator that we needed to get rid of um, so it was tough um, and he he was able to thought seize our our collected company almost every single game so like. Any, any answers we could have found, he, he was able to prevent. Uh, but again, like against most other matchups, I mean, as you saw against like the Tempo deck and the um, and that Vampires deck, it performs pretty well. It performs really well. Um, it's very it's a it's an exciting, cool new deck um, that is just exploding on the on the tournament scene right now. So um, get it while it's hot. You know, I think uh, you know I played a hand. I think I played four games and I won three. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I, I don't think you can see it. I have uh, MTG Assistant open right now. Statistics, my decks. So, f oh, we played five games. We won four. So an 80% win rate in Platinum. Um, and I, I seriously have suspicion that this deck will help you climb pretty quickly. So uh, if you have, you know, if you have all these cards and if you're playing in Historic... I would go craft it and go play a couple games, and you'll, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised with how it performs. I've, I've played a lot of other, like, decks like this. Like, there was Celestia Collected Company. Like, decks surrounded, or not surrounded, but decks built around Collected Company. I've played a lot of them, and a lot of them fall really flat. I don't know how people win games with them. Uh, but this deck has a lot to it. And there's, there, um, again, it's going to take a lot of knowledge. Like, you have to know the decks you're playing against to play it efficiently. Um, and like in the, in the sample size that we got here in my video today, obviously we were playing decks that I didn't know I, I've never piloted. I, I don't know what their big threats are and stuff like that. And we were still able to win. Um, so if, uh, if, uh, if a pilot who doesn't know the decks he's playing against can win games, then you guys out there who know your matchups and stuff like that, who maybe have played a vampire's deck, who maybe have played, uh, the mono blue tempo, you know, curious obsession and counter every spell that your opponent tries to play. Um, if you're one of those like soul sucking, uh, mages out there, I fucking hate that deck. <laughs> uh, if you can't tell, um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. I think you, I think you can climb pretty, pretty, uh, pretty fast. If you can just jam games with this, with this deck, you'll, you'll win. It's a win fast deck too. Uh, so you'll just get out there. You'll win games. So best of luck to all of you. Uh, I hope you like the, the Bant Coco, uh, deck. Um, go look at, uh, you know, some meta decks out there. Uh, again, I think the, it's like the call time qualifier, like the $5,000, the star city games tournament. Uh, this has been exploding over there. So go to MTG melee or maybe wherever else you find deck lists and maybe try to look up, uh, who's playing this and, you know, look up their win rate, look up their lists, look up their sideboards and stuff. But this is what I'm working with right now. So, uh, thanks for watching and, uh, without further ado, or what do you mean without further ado? Whatever. <laughs> See you later guys.